The latest lockdown polls have officially exposed and confirmed that Boris Johnson is one of the weakest political leaders in this country, as we've just discovered that the only reason Boris implemented the mandatory face nappies was because of pressure from Nicola Sturgeon. It's not really surprising. We already had a feeling about this. We knew we've already heard some rumors uh, in the past. We covered it on the channel about Boris Johnson and the way and the reason he implemented some of those lockdown policies, including the face nappies. Now we got confirmation because of the, the leaked WhatsApp messages, uh, the lockdown files that the, the Telegraph have now published in full, that Boris Johnson was afraid of Nicola Surgeon so much, especially during the lockdown days, that he was being peer pressured by the SNP establishment and the, the mainstream media and the liberal left to continue to impose uh, tyrannical policies. And they kept doing it. And we always wondered at the time, because we were saying, what's going on with Boris? That's not really the Boris that we knew of. He's supposed to be more pro-freedom. He claims to be pro-freedom. Something went wrong. Of course, the people around him and all the others, close people and advisors, as well as civil servants and Nicola Sturgeon and the media, he can't say no. He's weak and feeble. And we now have evidence. So this uh, WhatsApp group chat We've got Boris in it, we've got Matt Hancock, Lee Kane, who was the uh, director of comms, and Simon Case, the cabinet secretary, the head of civil service. Uh, Boris was saying, I'm about to be asked about masks in schools. Before we perform another U-turn, <laughs> can I have a view on whether they are necessary? Matt Hancock said, I understand the concern for secondary schools is because teenagers are hanging around in school corridors and hallways. Therefore, uh, the easier answer than responding with face coverings is to say that our guidance references one-way corridors, ventilation, etc. And to note that a brief encounters as a children switch lessons is usually a low risk. Okay, so at that point, Matt Hancock was not really in favour. Lee Kane said, considering Scotland has just confirmed it, it will, and I'm, yeah, that it will, I find it hard to believe that we will hold the line. At a minimum, I would give yourself flex and not commit to ruling it out. Also, why do we want to have this fight uh, on not having uh, masks in certain school settings? I've been away, though, so Simon Case and others may have good reason I'm aware of. Simon said, I agree with Lee. Uh, Gavin, uh, Gavin, um, um, uh, Williamson, who is the Education Secretary, uh, in the same place. Position today, Prime Minister, is that you have asked your scientific and education advisors to look at this. In light of the World Health Organization and Scottish evidence, Scottish evidence, jeez, and then go into Matt's stuff about uh, masks not being as critical as others measures, as other measures in, ch in schools. Simon Kess said, remember, secondary school kids already are already wearing masks on buses to schools and in shops. Chris Whittison said, the chief medical officer, there's no strong reason against it in corridors and no very st strong reasons for it either. The downsides are, class are on, on the classrooms because of the potential to interfere with teaching. So again, even Chris Whitty at that point was already skeptical, but they all ended up being so in favor of it, which is absolutely fascinating. So the, all of this was political decisions. None of it was based on science. It's just completely pro pro proving what we've been saying the whole time. A lot of those policies were based on political um, and, uh, tendencies that they had and pressure. Nothing to do with science, nothing to do with evidence. The, as you saw, Matt Hancock, Chris Whitty, all those guys were being more objective at the time, in, internally, behind closed doors. They knew the truth. They were doing critical thinking. They were, they were challenging their ideas. They were saying, well, I can see it in favor. I can see it against it. I, I see there's no urgency. Then they ended up coming up with some sort of unilateral, a, a unilateral agreement saying, let's just say this. Let's just go out there and scare people so much that some of them, two years from now, they're still going to be driving in their own cars on their own, covering their faces like idiots because they're so scared. Thank you so much, establishment, for doing this to our country. And you caused so much harm. But yet, 
we have exposed the lockdown leak, le le files, but who is going to be answering the serious questions? Who is going to get some sort of punishment? Any consequences? So far, nothing. Let me know what you think of this policy that was essentially pushed because they were scared of Nicola Sturgeon. I'm Maya 2 and we are the media.